Well, Frozen Falls, Azalea Gardens, and Twinkly Tunnels, they're all stops along the winter light experience at the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. Always so pretty there. It's all aglow for the holidays, and our Shane Wells has a sneak peek for us this morning. We typically think of visiting the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum to, you know, get our apples to see the tulips, the summer flower show, the fall colors. But what about the winter time? It's actually a really popular spot as well, and you can see why all around me because it's all aglow and it's botanical themed. We have Wendy Composto with us. She is the seasonal events manager here at the U of M Landscape Arboretum. Thanks so much for having us. Oh, thank you. Okay, how much work? When do you start doing this, putting this together? Because I know it's it's a small crew yes. that puts this on. Yeah, um, we start dreaming about it right after, actually during the show, what we're going to change for next year. But we physically start putting lights up in October. Okay. Uh, a lot of people come in and say, winter already. We're like, we're, <laughs> we're, we're just going to get ready for you now. Right. you got to be able to flip the switch. Probably also want to do a lot of this work when it's a little bit warmer. Yes. Am I accurate? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Well, you talked about some of the new features this year, but let's address where we're standing right now. Obviously, we see the beautiful weeping willow. Um, but there's going to be a lot of activity in this location. Right. This is um, also our s'mores village is right next to us. So we'll have some more packets for sale and our um, bonfire so people can warm up whether they want a s'more or not. Um, but this is definitely our newest attraction. The sweeping willow tree is 16 feet tall and it's just um, a magical piece. As you put this together, as you walk around, see the light dusting of snow. Do you have a spot that you just go, oh, it, that's it. That's the one. It's so beautiful. I love our azalea pond. Uh, we have our water lilies in the pond, and then in the back we have the trees uplit. Um, we do have to be very careful here. Our trees have no lights on them because we want to be very careful to keep our trees healthy. So we have up lights and um, lights all around our structures, but nothing on our trees. That's fascinating. I guess I didn't even realize that because you do have beautiful foliage and trees around here that you could use, but keeping them safe. Oh, that's a really good insight. Uh, one thing you mentioned, you said you love the azalea pond and the waterfalls. I was really impressed with how you created the waterfalls. <laughs> you know, we are always trying to um, be mindful of our budget. And so coming up with ways to make things that are beautiful and fun, but also um, save a penny or two. I used some um, fencing that was in my yard and pulled it out and put sprinkly lights on it. And to me, it looks like rippling water. And so I hope it does for the visitors too. It absolutely does, which is why when you told me what it was and how you created it, I was even more jaw on the floor, like, wow, it's so resourceful. And I think it's really important to note tickets here. You have to get those ahead of time. Absolutely. There are not tickets available at the gate. So go onto our website. It's super easy. Reserve a time spot. Um, we also reserve time spots. So we, it's not overcrowded. So people will have a great experience when they come out here. Fantastic. And of course, plan for the weather, whatever that may be. You're going to be doing a little bit of walking, about a three quarters of a mile. And again, this event starts up on Thursday. It runs through January 1st. Oftentimes, time slots will sell out. So make sure to get your tickets now.